Anyway, um, nice you. hey, how are you? Okay. Uh, with Draymond, do you expect sort of a normal minute range for him, or w do you expect him to be full strength uh, what, when he comes back? What, what sort of do you anticipate for him uh, uh, participation-wise? Uh, it's a good question. I mean, he, he's obviously not coming off an injury, so there's nothing limiting him uh, minutes-wise, but it'll probably be more about um, conditioning and you know who's playing well, and if we've, if we've got another group that's going well, we'll stay with that group. But... Um, um, We'll see how, where his conditioning is. I mean, it's hard to just take five games off and expect to be where you were. So it'll probably be more just kind of see how things are going. What, how immediate an impact can he make? Like you said, it's not been an injury. Sounds like he's been playing three on three or scrimmaging. How much of a difference can he make right away given who he is and the circumstances of his absence? Well, our defense instantly gets uh, dramatically better with Draymond. We know that. Uh, and then it's really a matter of, um, you know, f finding the right combinations within the game, uh, finding combinations that are that are in rhythm and, and clicking. And, you know, we're, we're searching for the best two-way version of our team. You know, we've got to find combinations that can get stops and, and then uh, create offense at the other end. So... Um, I would say with all the absences and um, injuries and stuff, we're, we're, you know, we're still searching for, uh, for that, that two-way, uh, consistent, efficient basketball. You, allude, you kind of just alluded to what I was going to ask, but now that the group will be whole, knock on wood, for a while, is this when you can really start to put pieces together over the next ha handful of games hopefully start to see what your team can actually be, what you hoped it would be. You knew, you said you knew it was going to take a little bit mm. to gel, but had a bunch of unexpected things come up in the last month. Yeah, hopefully we'll stay healthy here, you know, um, in the coming weeks and we'll have a, a better chance to kind of find, um, you know, the, um, the groups, the combinations, the rhythm, all that stuff that we um, – are, are hoping to see. Um, it's a good time for that to happen. The flip side of that is we have 12 guys who I think um, could play, 13 really. Um, if you go down the list, Corey Joseph's play, played really well. I've really only played him when either Steph or Chris has been out. But um, as you saw in Phoenix the other night, he's a really good player. And so the, both rookies have played well when I've had them out there. You just do the math, and we're we're at 12, 13 guys, and probably only playing nine or ten. So uh, this next uh, you know stretch will will test us in in a number of ways, um, including can um, you know can we uh, can we have all 13 guys um, you know competing when they're asked to compete, and otherwise supporting the group when when they're not. That's not an easy thing to do. On Tuesday's game, big implications, right, for the for the in-season tournament. But how maybe nice is it to have that Minnesota OKC game before yours to head into your game against the Kings knowing exactly what you would have to do? Is that a benefit, or do you think that could also No, be it is. It is a benefit because um, we will know that, um, you know, we can either win the group outright or – we have to win a tiebreaker, and if we have to win a tiebreaker, we'll know how many points we have to win by. So that is very helpful, um, and, um, you know, we'll see how it all plays out. But, you know, we want to win. Our guys have said all, all along we want to advance. We want to, uh, you know, win the, 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 the tournament, but um, Tuesday's going to be a big night for that. Uh, Kavon Looney's had some big game, big games against the Kings previously. What have you thought about how he's been this year, and what are you hoping to see from him? Moving up forward. Loon is uh, he's Mr. Consistent. You know, we always know what we're going to get from him. He's one of the best screen setters in the league, one of the best rebounders, and uh, he's rock solid defensively. So um, he's having another good year. Um, we always need him uh, against Sacramento because Sabonis is such a good player, and Loon is our primary defender on him. And um, so we're going to need Loon to continue to, to do what he does. What do you think the the motive is on the in-season tournament. I mean, everybody, obviously, you want to win, given the choice. But is it? You know, there's, I've seen some things written where you know players like the idea of the money. Oh well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> that that's what's driving them. I mean, what do you think the the, the sort of driving incentive is for you and the players? Honestly, I think uh, the and I've seen a few players 
say this, and I think this is true. Um, I think our vets would love to to win, uh, to see the younger guys who haven't made much money in this league, or you know, rookies or whatever, uh, get a, a significant chunk of money. I mean, that's that's real, and and I don't, it does obviously doesn't mean as much to the guys who are, you know, set for life and incredibly wealthy, all that, but. You know, much of the league is young guys who may only be in this league for a year or two or, um, you know, on a non-guarantee. And, um, you know, same thing for the, the coaching staff. If, if we can win this, then um, we're going to have a whole bunch of young coaches getting a good bonus, and that's meaningful. Um, and then on top of that, I think these guys are all so competitive that you just tell them you're playing for something, um, a trophy, uh, they're going to want to win. They just they love to compete. So um, I think you throw that all in the in the same same box, and guys are going to want to win. A secondary issue to that, I know, but is it strange at all not knowing your schedule a week from now? Yeah, it is. <laughs> and how, how helpful will that be? By I guess Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, you'll know. Right. One way or the other. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't disrupt us at all. It's just weird looking at next week's schedule and seeing those blank. You know, um, I mean, we know we have games, but we don't know against whom. So um, it, Tuesday night, once the the uh, pairings come out for everything, then our our advanced scout Scott Vaughn will be on that, and so will our uh, scouting teams that we have within the coaching staff. They'll all be uh, starting preparation. There's still enough time. There's still enough time. Yeah. Tuesday's game has pretty. Um like serious implications for the in-season tournament. You've been talking to a lot of guys about their own feelings, their motivations towards it. So you, for you personally, what are your thoughts on the in-season tournament, the winnings up for grabs, all those things? Uh, I'm excited for it, you know, especially um, to this game. You know, it should be, should be fun, competitive, playoff type atmosphere. You know, there's a lot at stake. Um, so, you know, it'd be, it'd be fun and, um, Exciting, you know, to be able to advance. So, uh, Draymond's been practicing and scrimmaging with you guys for a little bit, and he's mm -hmm. coming back Tuesday. What's it been like having him sort of get back into the fold with you guys, and and uh, what do you think of sort of maybe the impact that he's had in practice for you guys? Oh, it's amazing. You know, Draymond's one of those guys that you know you you can't you can't replace. You know, his his energy and what he brings to the you know to our team and the game of basketball is. You know, on another level. Um, <clears throat> today, when we scrimmaged, you know, it was it was great. You know, he was vocal, he was active, um, leader on the court, and you know, we won. You know, on the scrimmage, so having Draymond is a, you know, is a plus on in every aspect of you know being on the court. Two things: uh, one on Draymond, how how I guess you just just sort of addressed it, but how much can he make the difference in what you guys need? Because obviously, you've been sort of. The team's been sort of uneven, right? Had some yeah, good sure. games, some bad games. How much can he fix that? Um, I mean, Jermon Z, he's a he's a winner, you know, and you know he makes the game easier for a lot of guys on the court, for everyone on the court, um, defensively, you know, offensively, um, <clears throat> you know, even just his presence. Um, so, and unrelated um, to Kendra's question on in-season tournament, Steve was in here, and we asked him about the motive for for the players and to want to. Wanna, advance and he was honest said yeah money's a big part of it but he specifically said he thought the veterans guys like Steph Clay you who've, who've made a lot of money want to see the young guys get that big check is, is that fair do you think that's part of the incentive uh, for sure you know for sure you know you want to see the young guys um, you know get what they deserve you know they're working hard you know we're all in this together you know and even to be the first you know the first team to go and win it all you know that's for that's history you know I uh, think you just mentioned the vocal part of what Draymond brings to practice and Steph sort of talked about uh, last game, the, the communication aspect that's maybe sort of been inconsistent on defense. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like that's uh, sort of where things have been lacking defensively is the communication? Um, Definitely. You know, that's one of the things um, is, you know, communicating, you know, getting the right positions, rotating, and, you know, that comes with, you know, communication. Where do you feel like uh, your game's at? You obviously had that big 31-point game. 
you, it was very noticeable how animated and smiling you were throughout that game, yeah. um, especially at the end. And the last couple of games, you haven't scored much, but it seems like your shots coming along. Yeah. Where do you feel like you are in this process? Obviously, not been the start you envisioned. Yeah, I mean, a little slow start, um, but I feel like my game is, you know, coming along. Um, <clears throat> My shot's feeling better, my rhythm's feeling better, and I feel like every, with every game, you know, just getting better and better, and, you know, back to my normal self. One more if I can. Along those lines, what's this been like for you? I mean, it's been frustrating, I imagine, because you, you've played at such a high level throughout your career, mm -hmm. and particularly here the last couple of years. What's this last month been like for you? Um, I mean, just... You know, trying to find yourself again, trying to find um, that rhythm, you know, and just trying to find your spots and what you can do. You know, even when you're not scoring the basketball, you know, I'm not scoring the basketball. I'm like, okay, what else can I do to help the team win? Whether it's, you know, rebounding, just defending, you know, just playing hard and, you know, knowing the other stuff will take care of itself. Uh, do you notice anything different about Kevon Looney when he goes up against Sabonis? Um... You know, when, when the challenge, you know, approaches, you know, Luna's a, you know, the first one, you know, there to, you know, take on the challenge. And, you know, he's, you know, you seen it last year in the playoffs, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, who we, who we face is, you know, Luna always takes a challenge, you know, always makes it difficult and goes out there and competes.